Dreams Conference. Uh, thanks so much for having me. Let's jump right in. Today we're going to be talking about Bullet Bender, and I'm just going to take you from the ideation phase all the way to global launch. Um, first off, let's meet the team. Uh, our studio, Playcog, is made up of just two people, myself as the game designer and Ken Chen, our programmer. Um, also, uh, the publisher of the game is Lion Studios, and uh, I want to shout out Matt Murphy, who was our publishing manager for the game. Um, so yeah, the rundown, i uh, going to take you through um, three different sections here, the first one being our ideation phase, followed by uh, how we raise day one retention from 22 up to 42, and then the final section will be uh, once we had that 42 retention, you know, how we got our lifetime value from 29 up to 46 cents uh, on average. So yeah, first up, ideation. Um, just want to start by saying that this sort of uh, came on the back of a, a game that we uh, almost published. So we essentially, like, we're working on a game, it's called Samurai Showdown. Um, we went through multiple iterations, um, had thousands of downloads, and uh, internally, our studio, we thought, you know, this is this is going to get published. We have this, and you know, up until this point, we have not published a game. So um, this was going to be a big step for us. Unfortunately, when we went to scale it, the CPI shot up, and we just could not get that back down. So a um, bit of a bummer for us, but. Basically, when that happened, Lion came to us and was like, hey, let's, uh, let's do some video testing. Why don't you guys just come up with a bunch of different concepts and we'll just test a lot of things at once, see if we can get some traction and see if we can uh, get something going. So, um, yeah, so these, uh, before we go further, just want to say these uh, CTR numbers are based on a pure video test. So um, it's, uh, you know, uh, when the um, viewer of the ad clicks on this, it's going to take them to nowhere. So take these numbers with like a grain of salt. Um, I know different publishers probably have different benchmarks for this type of test. In this case, at the time, Lions uh, was just 0.5% uh, click-through rate. If we were able to achieve that, we were able to um, iterate on the game and move to the next step. So uh, the first one we tested was this game, Treasure Divers. Um, we were kind of looking at that game, uh, Lucky Looters, and the success of it, and trying to you know do a little twist on it. So this is kind of like our underwater version of that. Um, you're you know just swimming around. Uh, picking up loot, trying to avoid being seen by the enemy. Um, and our click-through rate here is 0.38%. Um, so we moved on from that. And yeah, I just want to point out that these four, I'm going to take us through four games here. We actually tested all four of these within a week. So uh, again, after that kind of us killing the previous game, Samurai Showdown, we were like, all right, let's just like throw as much at the wall and see if we can get anything to stick. So this is our first... Um, first CTR test and we decided to move on from it um, and this was our next one, uh, Ants. So before I get into this game specifically, I just want to talk about like the first person um, point of view uh, trend that we started to see emerge during this time. This was kind of around the time of uh, Nakama. Um, and so we saw that game, we wanted to do something similar, we wanted to kind of avoid just doing a typical like shooter experience. So this was an idea that we had, um, you know, I'm not sure how cultural this is, but uh, you know, as a kid, we would take magnifying glass, hold it under the sun, and like burn newspaper, burn uh, dry leaves, stuff like that. So this is like kind of a play on that. Um, you can see here we have these like giant ants and it's a bit of a destruction on these uh, ants. Uh, Click-through rate on this one was 0.35%. Um, so decided to scrap it, move on to the next one. Again, we're doing this as fast as we can, just seeing what we can get to work. That was kind of the strategy. So this next game, Bows and Arrows, um, this is a little bit more typical of your first person shooter. Um, we have, you know, this, this bow and arrow. Um, similar, you know, we kind of, I think, a little bit inspired from the N64 game Turok. So instead of a shooter, just have like the bow and arrow. Uh, and we got the click-through rate of 0.38%. So again, decided to move on from this one, but, um, you know, we're moving fast here. You'll see in the next slide that we were using this exact same environment. Um, and kind of the idea, our next idea 
uh, came from looking at this game and saying, you know, I think we kind of looked at this, we're like, okay, what would happen if the camera followed the arrow? And you're kind of traveling maybe from point to point um, with the camera following the arrow. So we kind of tossed that idea around and, um, you know, thought of a few different ways to do that. Um, one idea we had internally was to do a plane because we, we started thinking about traveling, right? Uh, so traveling from place to place as the arrow. Um, and so we thought about it doing like a first person plane um, and we kind of decided against that. Um, and then Ken was playing around with the bullet idea. And so we basically uh, tried that same environment again, but just following this bullet. Uh, and yeah, we immediately saw this and we were like, okay, this, this looks cool. We think we might have something here. And then when we did our video test, our click through rate um, seemed to agree with our thinking that um, there's something here. So uh, as you can see, 0.69 click through rate, we saw this, we're pretty pleased with the result and um, decided to do a real uh, CPI and retention test. So built out the uh, product, it was just like eight levels um, and we gave it a proper test and there you'll see a click through rate that's probably more in line with what you're gonna see from an actual CPI test. Um, and yeah, so just eight levels, uh, retention 22%, CPI uh, 12 cents. We saw this, the 12 cent number on the CPI and we were super thrilled with that. Um, as a studio, we had never seen a CPI like that. So uh, got these results back. CPI great, um, retention, okay, we need some work on retention. So uh, 22, obviously not gonna make it. Um, again, this is just a eight level prototype so we're seeing this and all right how can we boost retention so part two of the talk so uh we're gonna show how we bumped our retention up from 22 percent um and the first thing we did is the most obvious just add more levels uh so we went from eight to 20 levels of course they're looping um so whereas eight you know you might start to realize you're seeing the same levels over and over again 20 we feel like you know that might there's enough there to where even when it does loop you might not feel as much like you are doing the same thing over and over again um, and then we added new environments just to create some variation um, beach city forest these are you know pretty typical um, environments you see so we didn't want to try anything too crazy just um, work with just do what we know and and have seen worked in the past um, so yeah, that was our first kind of most obvious thing to uh, boost that retention. Um, and then our next thing was to add obstacles and interchangeables, uh, or sorry, obstacles, interactables, and challenges. Um, and so pillars and civilians, those were already in the game. Um, so those are pretty basic, pretty static. And then we just wanted to slightly turn the dial a little bit, do a little bit more dynamic with um, the windmills. Um, so we put the windmills in here, you know, we would often put the enemies right behind them so that you have to kind of time uh, when you are going to kind of fly through the windmill and hit the enemy. Um, the bulletproof vest is uh, same as a normal enemy, obviously, you just you got to be a little bit more accurate. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the last thing is the TNT explosives. So these are your interactables. Uh, basically, you know, this is just kind of like more of a rewarding experience where you hit the TNT barrel and you will, you know, get to kill multiple enemies, enemies at once. Again, we've seen these in other games, we've seen it working, so we just went with that. Um, yeah, and then, uh, alright, so just gonna jump into like turn rate a little bit here. Um, we were diving into that a bit and noticed for, for no particular reason uh, there was a little bit of a drop off on level 10 um, and you know we looked at level 10 and saw no real reason for that um, so what we did was we're like alright let's create a level variant let's just put it right down to level 10 so when people see that you know maybe they'll engage a little bit more um, so <clears throat> level 10 is our horde mode uh, this is basically like a bonus level there's no way to lose this and you can only play it one time the goal is just to kind of hit as many enemies within the time frame that you're given. Uh, in this case, it's like 13 seconds. So um, we also doubled the bullet speed. So changed the gameplay a little bit. 
Um, and yeah, the next level variant we have are the boss levels. Uh, so yeah, again, pretty typical in these types of like action adventure games where you're gonna have after normal levels, you're gonna build up to a boss level. In this case, we put these kind of like pressure points on here uh, so that you could play this level a little bit more skillfully. Um, so if you hit these pressure points, you're gonna get double the damage. Um, and also, this is a change of gameplay a little bit. So on the normal levels, you are just shooting one bullet and having to kill all the enemies with that one bullet. And this boss level, you know, you're shooting multiple bullets. Um, as you can see, uh, signified by the UI on the left side of the screen. Um, and then, yeah, we added this nice level map to show your progression, to show, you know, the next environment that you're going for, um, to, you know, to kind of like help you along. It is a block of 20 levels before you get a new environment. Um, so I think that's, you know, a little longer than what may be typical, but, um, but yeah, with this level map, you kind of know what you get. Um, and yeah, this was, we were starting to see these in games at the time too. Again, this is uh, like spring, summer of 2020. Um, okay, so those changes essentially got us to 22% um, uh, from 22% to 34%. Uh, so a bit of a jump there, 12%. We're like, okay, we're, we're making progress here. Um, <clears throat> we're getting there, maybe still not there yet. What else can we do? Um, so. We dove into the churn uh, data, you know, even harder. Um, you can see what's highlighted in red here. This is um, where we have the most churn. Um, uh, you know, the levels four through uh, nine there. Um, so what we what we realized when looking at this was like we're we're getting a lot of drop off on the levels that are more difficult. Um, so what we do, we just we just made them easier. Um, the one of the biggest decisions, I think, in making this easier, um, and as you saw in previous slides, like it's a pretty um, open, kind of free terrain um, where there are enemies on steps, uh, which you know cause the user to need to uh, input vertical movement. So um, Lion kind of came to us and they're like, "Hey, let's make it easier, and let's let's actually let's actually kind of take out the vertical vertical movement." and you know, at first when we heard this, we're like, oh, that's one of the things we love about the game is that you can just go anywhere. Um, and, you know, in hindsight, looking back, like, Lion was definitely right. Like, uh, we essentially took that out. Um, you can still move vertically, but we just designed the level so that you don't need to. So everything's kind of in a straight line on a horizontal plane. Um, so this definitely made the game easier. Um, the vertical movement when moving up, you know, it's kind of like the whole scene goes out of screen. Um, so by eliminating that, you know, it's kind of like you're keeping the enemies in your sight at all times, makes the levels a lot quicker, um, and that, you know, that definitely helped a ton. Um, again, it was something that, like, at the, the first idea we didn't like, but of course, like, we're going to listen, like, Lion, obviously, you know. They are a massive publisher and have done this a million times, so uh, we're gonna listen and the results were, were, uh, were good. Um, the second thing we did to eliminate you know, some of this churn was to optimize the game. Uh, again, as a young studio, never published a hit game before, this was new to us. Um, so we, uh, Lion you know, helped, helped us out there a little bit. Um, and kind of the main things we do, and we do this now uh, in all of our games is to bake the meshes together, you know, kind of uh, eliminate a lot of the triangles in the game, uh, bring down the, uh, the batches, um, and also allow GPU instancing on all of our materials. So yeah, again, just doing things to bring the batches down. These are pretty like, uh, you know, w when you go through this optimization, that's, I think those are kind of the, the biggest uh, things you can do to make a difference. And yeah, after learning that lesson, it's something we definitely, we live by now. Um, so, yes, yeah, so now we're gonna look at the difference in the churn rate from from uh, previous example to now we have optimized the game and made the levels like a lot easier um, and quicker. I think that's important as well. Um, and as you can see, the churn rate uh, reduced pretty dramatically. 
our goal was, you know, we want to do like, you know, 1% churn per level. I think we got somewhat close to that. Um, yeah, so the, I, I think a good kind of indicator here is to, to look at the um, chart on the left and, you know, level 10, we have a churn of, uh, on level 10, we have a completion rate of 64% of our users are getting uh, to level 10. And then if you look at the next chart, we have level 20, 65%. So we, we really uh, doubled the amount of levels that those same uh, users in the previous build were playing. Um, and so that made a big difference. That made a big difference with overall engagement, uh, especially on that initial, initial playthrough. And as you can see here, we uh, were able to, you know, that our original test at 22%, we were able to get day one retention up to 42%. So we're like, okay, we have a game uh, with a, a good CPI here, uh, 12 cent CPI, we have retention 42% day one, um, what's next? Uh, lifetime value. Um, so we started out just by, you know, doing the obvious interstitials and banners. Um, and so we were able to see a lifetime value of 29 cents there. Um, and yeah, the title of this section, how many ways can you serve a rewarded video? Um, we will answer that question here. Um, here's number one. So, you know, we're, we're looking at the game and, uh, you know, you have the character um, and then of course the bullet. And, and, and that's really the decision we made. There's like, um, the bullet is the most important thing. It's what you're seeing the whole time you're playing the game. Um, it's, it's front and center of the screen. Um, so we really wanted to prioritize the skins for the bullet. Um, and yeah, as you can see here at the end of every level, you're going to have a little bit of a progression, um, you know, in, until the point in which you unlock that bullet. So, um, you're at the end of every level, you're getting that little teaser of, Hey, this is, uh, this is coming. So stay tuned. Um, and then of course when that bullet unlocks, it's not for free. Um, you have to watch a rewarded video to get it. So um, that was that's number one. Um, and then number two, this is a little bit of just like a past level, um, a kind of more interesting way to do that. Um, you know, the curiosity element is there. What is the golden gun? We never really explain it. Um, but uh, if you if you do press it, you'll you'll learn that. Um, Essentially, it's going to fire multiple bullets and let you pass the level. So this kind of serves two purposes. Like if a user ever gets stuck on a level, they can quickly um, get past that by watching a reward video and uh, you know having the golden gun experience. And also this kind of golden gun thing is there, um, just kind of like teasing you, like what is this? Um, so that is our second way to serve rewarded videos. Number three is the classic gotcha system. So here, I think this is on level 17, you first experience this. Um, essentially, you kill this character, he has a key over his head, and you're given the option of choosing a briefcase. Um, and again, giving you that teaser of this is the um, unlockable that you're going to get, um, or you could get. And of course, uh, it's impossible to get uh, on your first go around. It will take uh, a second or third try um, to be able to get the best prize. In this case, the Space Force Bullet, um, which also increases your uh, speed slightly. Um, so yeah, you you are gonna have to watch a reward video to get that one. Um, and yeah, that's a another reward video experience. And then shops. Okay, so you know the traditional thing, you can go to a shop whenever you want to. In this case. Um, we're only going to give you, uh, you know, the opportunity to shop every so often. So I think it's like three times every block of 20 levels are you given the opportunity to actually purchase something with your, uh, with your currency. Um, and then of course we put like the bullet skins, which um, which we found that users interacted with the most through testing. Uh, we we put those on the far right there. Again, gotta watch a video to get them. Um, but yeah, this is something that, you know, uh, Lion had insight on, uh, not a lot of engagement on the normal shot. So we wanted to try this kind of, uh, where you're only given the opportunity to shop so often. So, you know, with that kind of a little bit more rarity, uh, maybe you will be more likely to, uh, 
you know, spend spend all your money and potentially watch a reward video to get the more desirable item. Uh, money drop, this is pretty classic. Uh, twice every block of 20 levels, there's a character with a briefcase. You know, you have to shoot them to get through the level. Um, and then, you know, at the end of the level, you're given an opportunity. So again, like, instead of doing uh, kind of double coins or double cash uh, at the end of every single level, um, you know, not seeing a ton of engagement on that, so we wanted to offer that experience every so often. Again, uh, with the increased like rarity, maybe you are more likely to actually watch a video and claim the 500 cash. Um, yeah, and then unlockable guns. These guns, uh, you know, they are not just vanity. They do have stats. Uh, so you're getting extra coins by by getting these, and these you do buy with cash, and these you can engage with um, you know at the end of every level or the beginning of every level um, but as you upgrade your gun uh, and you you kind of max out your cash uh, you are given the opportunity to upgrade again uh, with the rewarded video so uh, this will be the final way and this one again Lion was seeing su success with like some VIP experiences so this is our version of that uh, you know playing these wanted characters um, so, essentially, you're going to play the same level no matter what. If you do choose to uh, participate in this experience, then you, um, you're going to get a 500 reward, and also you're going to get to see this cool character um, in the level, and they will additionally make the level a little bit more challenging because, um, you know, there's an additional enemy that you're going to have to take out. Um, so yeah, that are those are our different ways uh, to serve rewarded videos. Um, total of six to answer the question, um, and then we have our kind of reward rewarded video uh, placement uh, chart here. Uh, this is like this is a block of twenty levels. Um, on the far left of the screen, you will see uh, indicator of um, you know, the rewarded video experience. So four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 10, 12, 13, 14, all the way down to 20. Um, those are all the rewarded video experiences. So we really, uh, we really laid it on thick here. Um, as you can see, bottom of the screen, 12 of 20 levels offer the rewarded video chance. Um, and yeah, so 60% of the time, you're gonna get a, a chance to watch a rewarded video. And through this, we were able to get our rewarded videos up to four and a half uh, rewarded videos per user. Um, and, and yeah, of course, this boosted the lifetime value up quite a bit. So uh, we went from 29 uh, all the way up to 46 cents lifetime value. And with this, we were able to go to global launch. So um, at this point, uh, over 10 million downloads. Um, and yeah, again, you know, takeaways here. I'm, I hope that everyone was able to get something out of this. Um, but yeah, really want to just speak right now to some of the smaller studios um, and just say, uh, you know, from our experience that like it, anything is possible. Um, don't think just because you're not a team of like 20 people that, you know, you can't have a hit game. Um, it really just takes that initial idea and then um, you can get support to help you bring it to uh, to global launch. So yeah, thanks very much for having me. Uh, yeah, hope you guys have a good rest of your day.